Seven billion dollars, that's more than what the whole of Mazda, the car company, is worth. And that's the amount of Tesla stocks sold by Elon Musk at the beginning of November 2021. Mazda employs over 40,000 people and produces three times as many cars per year as Tesla. And in any other company, uh, the major shareholder and founder selling six billion dollars in stock without an explanation would tank the stock. The stock's been under pressure, but remember, this is Tesla. It's different. As I record this, Tesla stock dropped from its all-time high, but not that much. It's roughly where it was a month ago. And that is a big victory for Elon. We're going to break down how he achieved that and what we can learn from it about financial markets. First, we need to survey the battlefield. Who's participating in trading Tesla? To get a perspective on the amount, there's a scene in Billions where a professional trader struggles to sell about $200 million worth of Blue Hind Steel. Some 5 million shares of Blue Horn Steel at 40. Problem is, trades by appointment. No broker will take all 5 million and guarantee my price. Tesla has a market cap of around $1 trillion, so it's a mega capitalization, much larger and liquid than Blue Hind, but still. It's also one of the most shorted stocks and one of the most overvalued based on traditional metrics. Now, in the market, we know that Tesla is often supported by a large number of retail traders, whereas on the other side, it's a stock that hedge funds love to short. Short sellers of Tesla may appear foolish. It's been a losing trade, but they are sophisticated traders. They have made billions before, and they would know everything about Musk before we discover it. Also, the fundamentals are in their favor, and even Musk said the stock was overpriced. Now let's look at Musk himself. Billionaires sell all the time, but not him. He only sold twice before, so this is a big event. Elon Musk exercising another $2.1 billion in options yesterday, selling off just under a billion dollars to pay those taxes. That brings his total options exercises to $4.6 billion and his sales for taxes to just over $2 billion. He's got another $20 billion or so of options that he still has to exercise, along with another $10 billion or so of tax sales as part of that compensation package that expires in August. And let's not forget that being the CEO, he has to disclose all the trades to the SEC. Everything has to be public. And typically, when you have to execute a large amount, you want to be as discreet as possible, but that's not going to be an option. What we also know is that other CEOs typically strive for clarity and seriousness, but Musk is playing a very different game. Now, this overview is a simplistic view of the market. In fact, it's a crowd with many different participants. And the largest holders of Tesla would be institutional players with their own set of rules and objectives. Now let's look at the landscape. What are the forces and constraints that we have to deal with? A crucial element to understand the trade is the timing. In October, shorts were at their lowest levels. At the same time, there was an increase in the volume of calls. The implied volatility of Tesla was spiking. And we know these were not just bullish retail investors. They were institutionals. In other words, hedge funds mainly. If you're a hedge fund manager, you're bearish and you're now scared of going short, you see the stock and volatility at all time highs, what you really want to do is sell calls. And when you sell naked calls, they appear as open interest because your counterparty has to create them. With this strategy, you receive a premium upfront, but if the stock goes up, you're exposed to unlimited losses. I'm in some shit. And to hedge, you need to buy the stock as it goes up, which is known as a gamma squeeze. And then when the stock took off, it was too late to ask you for help. And now uh, uh, I'm getting a margin call. That was the situation when the news of uh, the Hertz deal came up. The price shot up, the hedge funds started closing their positions, and the open interest in the short call position was reduced dramatically. By the end of October, short sellers were pretty much all wiped out. I believe that's the single most important factor to explain the timing of Elon's trade. But there's more. At the peak, Elon's brother, Tim Bulb, sold over $100 million worth of shares at around $1,200. A fantastic execution and the price barely moved. The next day, Elon Musk was ready to start selling. 
In the next episode, we're gonna get right into the battle. We're gonna see how Musk rallied his troops and controlled the narrative, and at the same time, how he used the hedge fund's own strategy to execute the trade smoothly. I hope you enjoy this. Please subscribe and stay tuned for part two coming next week. And if you have comments and questions, please leave them below.